Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons and Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better research next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Vexen from Kingdom Hearts, a scientist who's definitely doing things ethically. Can you imagine a Kingdom Hearts character violating the very soul of decency in the name of curiosity? If you've played Kingdom Hearts, I know you can. If you haven't, just stick around, it's still gonna be a cool build. You're so cool. You're so cool. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, to quote Saint Knack, ice is nice. Next, we need a shield. I have a feeling we're not gonna have a lot of HP for some reason. Finally, if you can't beat the good guys, we'll just clone them and make them fight themselves. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Intelligence will be number one. You're a scientist, they tend to be pretty smart. Constitution after that, if you can't stand the cold, stay out of the fridge. Dexterity next, while trying to be defensive, you still wear only a black robe. I'm sure it's very comfortable, but it doesn't dodge damage like plate mail. Follow that up for wisdom. Just for perception, not for insight, you signed up for a death cult. That's a bad idea. Strength is a bit low. You don't need to lift things if you can just clone children to do your chores. We'll dump charisma though. Everyone hates Vexen. The good guys hate him because he's evil. The bad guys hate him because he's a nerd. Vexen used to be a normal guy with no X's in his name, but then he got Kingdom Hearts dead and resurrected by a Kingdom Hearts lich, so we'll go for Reborn. That gives you plus two to one stat and plus one to another stat, bump your intelligence by two and your dexterity by one. Those are the best places to put those stats. Your deathless nature gives you advantage on death saving throws and saving throws against being poisoned, resistance to poison damage, and you don't need to eat, drink, breathe, or sleep. Knowledge of a past life lets you add a d6 to an ability check and amount of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus, which should help you do some research. You were doing research before you were a nobody. Reborn can grab two skills for free. We don't really need any of them, but perception and sleight of hand could be nice. They'll stop people from sneaking up on you and let you cast spells with Lurich. Take the sage background for Arcana and History skills, it's the nerd background. You're a huge nerd. Wizards are also huge nerds, so we're gonna start there. That'll give you two more skills from the wizard list, like Investigation and Religion. There's a big mix of religious overtones and sciencey stuff in Kingdom Hearts lore. Spells and cantrips are obviously the main draw. Ray of Frost fires a ranged spell attack that deals 1d8 cold damage and slows creatures' movement speed by 10 feet. Frostbite forces a constitution saving throw a creature dealing 1d6 cold damage and giving them disadvantage on their next attack roll. I don't have a preference for which of these is better. I would take the middle ground and say each one is useful in different situations. You also get a third cantrip, so uh, light will help you see in the dark with your bad reborn eyes. Xemnas doesn't seem like the type of guy to keep his castle well lit. For first level spells, Ice Knife is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 piercing damage, then forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a five foot radius of the attack, dealing 2d6 cold damage to those that fail. So throw an icicle at a team teenager, and the ice will also hurt his dog and duck too. Frost Fingers is from the Rime of the Frost Maiden. If your DM doesn't want you to use it out of that setting, that's fine. We'll get plenty of other spells. Makes a 15-foot cone of frost that forces a constitution saving throw on creatures inside, dealing 2d8 cold damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Shield adds 5 to your AC as a reaction for a magical blue shield. It's finally one for one. Hooray. Mage Armor makes your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor, so you'll be at base 15 and 20 after a shield very good at level one. Silvery Barbs is a different way to protect yourself, giving a creature disadvantage on an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. If that causes them to fail, another creature of your choice gets advantage on an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Identify tells you what a magical item does and how many charges it has left. I'm guessing the Keyblade opens things, just a shot in the dark though. As a wizard, you get Arcane Recovery, letting you recover half your wizard level in spell slots on a short rest, helping keep things cool with less sleep. I get more sleep when it's cold. I like to roll myself in the blanket. Like a little burrito. Second level wizards can choose a school. Abjuration will help keep the damage off your stinky wizard hit tie with an arcane ward. That's a magical shield that automatically takes damage for you with a number of HP equal to double your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier after you cast an abjuration spell like shield or mage armor. After your arcane ward is activated, it heals an amount equal to double the level of abjuration spells you cast, so it kind of keeps refreshing itself. So not only does casting shield keep damage off in the short term, it also makes another 
shield that also shields itself. For this level spell, Grease makes a 10 foot patch of difficult terrain that forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside, knocking them prone if they fail. It's honestly not the best, but it's funny to watch people slip on ice. Chromatic Orb shoots a ranged spell attack that deals 3d8 acid, cold, fire, cold, lightning, cold, poison, cold, thunder, or cold damage. I think I'd go for cold if I were you. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Rhymes Binding Ice forces a constitution saving throw in a 30 foot cone, dealing 3d8 cold damage and preventing those that fail from moving. Half damage and no movement restriction if they succeed. Freezing people is fun. For a fun example of power creep, check out Snillox Snowball Swarm. It forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a five foot radius sphere, dealing 3d6 cold damage to those that fail. It's a smaller area, deals less damage, and has no additional features. Fun. Oh, and it can be evaded with evasion. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement, bump your intelligence since it helps with your offensive cold spells and defenses from arcane wards. I don't think we need any other spells at this point. Wizards get too many. Pick two more you like. Maybe get something other than cold damage might be a good idea. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Sleet Storm creates a 20 foot high, 40 foot radius of snow and sleet, heavily obscuring the area, turning it into difficult terrain, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures inside, knocking them prone if they fail, and any concentrating casters have to make a constitution saving throw to maintain their spell. It's a whole suite of debuffs that could really ruin someone's day. Summon Shadow Spawn creates a little shadow dude under your control with your bonus action. The stats are in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. This video is already long. Summon a Shadow Sora to fight Sora and hide behind your shield. Six level abjuration wizards get projected ward, letting you send your ward to defend other creatures. Although I think the whole point of conjuring a shadow is so that you don't have to protect it. For this level spell, counter spell will protect you against spells, shutting down spells of third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spell's level. If you think the best defense is a good offense, Spirit Shroud adds a D8 of cold, radiant, cold, necrotic, or even cold damage to your attacks made within 10 feet of you, I think we're gonna go for cold. After you deal that extra damage, the creature can't heal until the start of your next turn, and it slows an enemy creature within 10 feet of you. So Ray of Frost gets an extra D8 of cold damage, and nobody can run away as long as you shoot it within 10 feet of you. Seven level wizards can learn fourth level spells. Ice Storm creates a 20 foot radius, 40 foot high cylinder of ice that forces a dexterity saving throw, dealing 2d8 bludgeoning damage and 4d6 cold damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's like Sleet Storm with damage, and the height and radius are flipped. Fire Shield makes a shield of fire or a shield to protect you from fire. I think a chill shield is best for you. You're pretty chill. That gives you resistance to fire damage, and creatures that hit you with a melee attack take 2d8 cold damage. They don't even have to deal damage, they just have to hit you. So if you've got an arcade ward up and somebody hits you, they're just gonna take cold damage. It's really fun. Eighth level wizards get another ability score improvement, cap off your intelligence modifier, then start working on your constitution for more HP. Sure, Vexen has a shield, but he also has several health bars, and the d6 wizard hit die isn't doing it. Not taking any spells at this level. Whatever you want is fine. Maybe haste? I like haste. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells. Cone of Cold forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 16 foot cone, dealing 8d8 cold damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's just a big old cold blast. Scrying lets you spy on people climbing the tower, forcing a wisdom saving throw on them, and letting you watch them if they fail. There are some things that can modify the saving throw. If you've only heard of them, it's an easier save. If you've met them, it's a neutral save, and if you know them well, it's a harder save. Their modifier for the saving throw is also modified if you have a creature of them, a possession of theirs, or a piece of their hair or body. The last one is creepy. Just have Lark seen pickpocket a trinket or something. Tenth level abjuration wizards get improved abjuration, letting you add your proficiency bonus to your checks you make with counterspell. It's super fun until your DM counterspells your counterspell. Speaking of spells, you can grab some if you want. Telekinesis is pretty fun. 11th level wizards can learn 6th level spells. Investiture of Ice gives you immunity to cold damage, resistance to fire damage. Ice doesn't count as difficult terrain for you. The 10 foot radius around you is difficult terrain, made by ice, and you can use your action to force a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cone, dealing 4d6 cold damage to those that fail. It's a bunch of ice stuff to make you an ice man. Goose! Fizzbin's Platinum Shield gives a creature the benefits of half cover, evasion to take half damage on failed deck saves, no damage on successful ones, and resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, and poison damage. And since it's an abjuration spell, it'll also create an arcane ward worth 27 HP, or heal your arcane ward 12 HP. Hitting Vexen's hard. 12 level wizards get another ability score improvement. Keep working on that constitution so you have a bunch of real HP under your fake HP. Wall of Ice and Otilu's Freezing Sphere are options at this level. They're not really things Vexen does, but you could add them to the list. I feel like they're in character. 13th level wizards get 7th level spells. Teleport lets you and up to 8 creatures teleport somewhere on the same plane you're familiar with. If you're not familiar with it, you might teleport to the wrong place. Just go where you know. Radiant Garden, the Keyblade Graveyard, Arendale, 
Wait, Vexen wasn't in Arendale? That's the Frozen level. Why did they send the Lightning Girl there? And another spell, Plane Shift, maybe. If you consider the different worlds of Kingdom Hearts, different planes. I don't. It's the same plane. 14th level Abjuration Wizards get Spell Resistance, giving you advantage on saving throws against spells, and you have resistance to the damage from spells. That resistance doesn't apply to your Arcane Ward, so that takes full damage, and then you just resist the damage that's left over. Again, the worst part of the Vexen fight is just trying to hit the dude's real HP. Simulacrum makes a duplicate of a creature with half as much HP as it normally has, as long as the creature is within your range for 12 hours. Since that clone is going to work for you, I don't have to build Repliku separately, because Vexen already did that. 15th level wizards can earn 8th level spells, power word stun, I guess. It stuns a creature with less than 150 HP until they can make a constitution saving throw. I want later wizard stuff, not really even spells anymore, but Vexen isn't anything else. I guess I could dip to fighter for a level to also use a shield shield rather than a spell shield. Not at the 16th level of wizard though, that's where we're bumping your constitution again. Wizards shouldn't be tags, but if they are, and they can also cast 9th level spells, why not, right? 17th level wizards get 9th level spells. Ice spells stop at the 6th level, and abjuration spells kind of stop at the 5th. So grab foresight to just be better than everyone else, giving you advantage on ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws, and creatures attacking you will have disadvantage. It lasts for 8 hours, so after that, go to sleep. Or I guess since you're a reborn, stand still for 4 hours. Spooky. 18th level wizards get spell mastery, letting you choose one spell from 1st level and 2nd level to cast at will like a cantrip. Shield basically adds a permanent 5 to your AC, and also will create an arcane ward of 41 damage reduction and heal the arcane ward 2 damage every round after that. Abjuration wizard is so silly. For your 2nd level spell, Rhyme's Binding Ice could be fun. It's not the godly power of an on-demand shield, but it's still nice. 19th level wizards get another ability score improvement, cap off your constitution, and raise another stat by one if you want. Doesn't really matter, you're a god. Get whatever you want. Our capstone is the first level of fighter. You really thought I wouldn't multi-class, you chump. Multi-classing to fighter gives you proficiency with shields, so you can carry a shield in one hand and your casting focus in the other for an extra 2 AC. With mage armor, that's 17 AC that turns into 22 every round since you can also cast the shield spell at will. Then, everyone will have disadvantage to attack you with foresight and still have to get through your arcane ward to deal any damage. And you have 184 HP after that. Whoops, we're not in the pro section yet. So, uh, grab a fighting style, like, uh, archery, I guess. Second wind heals 1d10 plus your fighter level, or 1d10 plus 1. Okay, now pros. First, nobody can deal damage to you. Second, if anybody ends up dealing damage to you, you have a ton of HP. Finally, you can deal consistent damage with frosty spells that have fun additional effects as well. For weaknesses, if someone resists cold damage, you could have trouble hurting them. Unless, you grabbed other spells with all the extra spells you could grab, or you send a shadow spawn after them, or a simulacrum of a goth kid. You're also susceptible to grappling, with no athletics or acrobatics proficiency to break out if someone gets a hold of you. They can't hurt you though, so not really an issue. Finally, your charisma is bad. You have no proficiency with any charisma skills either, so people aren't going to like you. Hilariously, that's really your only weakness. You're so bad at talking to people, it doesn't matter that you can never take damage. Your lich boss is still gonna fire you and hire a goth kid simulacrum instead, but that's fine, because you can get revenge by helping the scientist your lich boss's zombie body was stealing the identity of. If you haven't played Kingdom Hearts, thanks for sticking around. There's a lot of weird stuff if you don't have the context. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak Mango for more Tulak fun.